Okay. Does everybody know Naya? Yeah. yeah. Who does not know Naya? among senior citizens, balance is often the cause of falls, which can lead to a number of physical injuries. Uh, I actually fractured uh, some bones in my foot, fell down the stairs. My mother took her last fall down the stairs to the basement, and Never since Amy? that time, they Amy. had to move to an assisted living facility. And I chalk most of it up to the mere fact that their balance was terrible. According to the CDC, among older adults, falls are the leading cause of both fatal and non-fatal injuries. As seniors age, the strength in their body, start, their muscle tone starts to decrease. When they start to lose their balance, if they don't have the strength to come back or the ability to counter that, then they're going to fall. To help build strength and increase balance, Amy Zick teaches this class. Right leg, lift it up. Lift and lower. From Eight leg times. strength to core strength by using a stability ball. <laughs> then on to the yoga what blocks. Job, you guys. And All one right. of Jack Mayer's biggest challenges? The balance on one leg is, uh, is, is very shaky, and the more I do it, the better I get. The class increases strength, balance, and confidence. You're not going to do the things that I do in class, but it does give you the opportunity in a safe environment to feel those moves so that when you are out and you start to lose your balance at least you can feel that and counter it and hopefully not fall or hurt anything and continue to live a, a wonderful life outside of an assisted or nursing facility. Balance can also be affected by poor eyesight, cataracts, and certainly medications can cause dizziness. Increasing strength means go, increasing hold balance. It hold it. But since I've been doing the balance, I feel as sturdy as a mountain. For Healthy Living, I'm Marcy Fraser. Okay. So that was when uh, channel, whatever. 13, 8, 9. I don't know what channel uh, Marcy Fraser was on. So we got one more video to show you because explaining what balance actually is is sort of, is sort of a hard thing. So I just figured maybe the visual would be good and then we're going to talk to you. All right. Oh, no, not from there. We're To shame with 10 minute balance, and I'm going to give a quick overview. Sorry. My bad. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We'll just use a simple stick figure diagram here. So we have our foot position, which is an important aspect of balance. Uh, how we have our feet in terms of distance uh, apart gives us a wider or more stable base. And you'll see in the next diagram that make, when we change that, it's gonna make a bit of a difference in terms of how we feel. The other component is this center point. And if you just have that center point extend down to the ground, a nice balanced state is gonna have a little bit of distance on each side. So we got some room to sway a little bit side to side, but everything's well within that, that base of support for that foot position. Now, if we change that foot position where the feet are very close to each other, then what that's done, and we haven't really done anything besides just move the feet in closer together. But notice that that whole base of support is maybe half the size of what we started off with in that first picture. Our center point is still kind of dead center in that base of support. But because we have less space here, we don't have as much ability to control that center of mass or center of pressure. And as a result, we're going to sway a little bit more side to side because we don't have that distance down here. So we're going to start to see that movement happen up top. Now, if we add in a narrow base and then 
you start to do something like reach to one side, where we start to reach. So now we have two things. We have less margin for air down there at the peak, but now that center point is starting to move over as we reach down. And if we can't control that, we're going to start to see motion happen in the body, and we'll call that a fall. Um, if that, if we want to prevent that fall from happening, we're going to have to take a step with that foot and reestablish a new base of support. And that's going to help you continue to keep that bed dot within our base, and then we'll be able to pull out of that movement and come to a more balanced and again, just like we saw over here in figure one. So in a nutshell, balance is the ability to maintain the body's center point within its base of support. So you have the position of the feet as element A, center point B, and then that control system, system which I kind of diagram there in the blue, which is very complicated, I just kind of breezed over that, but that's item C. So those three elements work together to help us stay balanced. Um, so hope that helps you better understand balance. Thanks for tuning in to this. Okay. So now we're going to sort of explain that. Or not yet. Right. So to break it down. So when I work with patients, I tell them my favorite thing to say is your feet cannot kiss. Dude, what are you talking about? Your feet can't kiss. You should never have your feet where they're touching each other. If you're lifting your leg up doing the exercise and bringing your foot down, it should be up and then down with a wide base of support. Think about how sturdy you can feel standing like this versus like this, okay? So that's the base, what we were talking about, the base of support, your feet. Are they close or are they apart? Now, when you talk about center of gravity, as we grow up, I won't say get older, as we grow up, we start to potentially have a forward lean, okay? And that forward lean comes from our position, our posture changes, so we start to lean forward just a little bit. And then also, think about if you have any pain your back hurts, you're gonna lean forward a little bit. So now your center of gravity is now forward. If you lose your balance going forward, what's there to protect you? You have to have good strength in your legs to counter any type of loss of balance that's coming forth you if now you're standing like this. Now leaning, sometimes people lean. It talks about this when you have your center of gravity this, and you're up here and then you're out to the side. So now if you're standing and now you're leaning like this, Think about how quickly you can fall standing like this versus standing like this. So that's a big thing about balance to trigger and to practice stuff. At no time do you think that you're standing in your apartment like this. Nobody stands on one leg, not on purpose. So if you're doing anything, you're just picking up your foot. At all times when you're walking, you are on one, one leg. At some point, you are on just one leg. So you need to make sure you develop the strength in your lower extremities to be able to tolerate that, to be able to stand on one leg and prevent any type of fall. So I think what I see happen is, so she just talked about your base of support, where your base of support isn't just here and here. If I'm correct, it's also here yeah. and here. So what happens is, what I've seen is an older adult will start taking these littler steps that are close together, right? So where, when we step, normally, it's just about, what, a little less than hip width yep. apart, yeah. maybe? Yeah. Right? But right. you guys, you're here, so the base of support's not as big. So the other thing, too, she's talking about leg strength, is if we don't have enough strength in our ankles, or range of motion to point, that's plantar flex, to point it, to dorsiflex, I'm bringing my toe towards my chin, I can't make the full round of my gait, okay? So you'll see me do it too. It's like I'll walk and all of a sudden my toe gets it, right? So that could be part of I'm not picking my knee up appropriately, I don't have enough dorsiflexion maybe or plantar flexion in my ankle. So I make you guys do a lot of exercises that work the ankles, so I make sure, I think a lot of people can plantar flex, I think oh, yeah. it's dorsiflex. So that if you starts. lose your balance and you go backwards, this is what you do. But it happens that your toes come up. If you don't have the strength to, for your toes to go up, you're going straight back. 
you're going to fall right into the water like crystal light. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have enough strength in your toes, your ankles for dorsiflexion to counter it. You go backwards, your toes go up. You go forward, you go up on your tippy toes. That's where you need the ankle strength to counteract any type of change in position. Right. Fall. And when you reach up for cabinets, right, I need that martini glass, I'm up on my toes and I'm reaching, right? So I need to strengthen that. Now I'm reaching, I'm out of my, my base of support. So you need to, need to be careful. So the other thing too is there's three strategies in, in, in balance that your body should automatically do. Okay, so we all sway. We've all gone to church and we've all seen the people <laughs> swaying back and forth, right? Little, little. This is my ankle strategy, right? Your body does this so we don't tip over, right? Do you see that little thing I just made? I went out of my ankle strategy and I went into my hip strategy and that's what Nadia was showing you when she went back on her feet and she had to do that, right? If I don't have the strength in my body, when I've gone past my hip strategy, the step strategy has to come in. And that's what he was saying in that last figure is the person, narrow base, they've reached, they've gone too far. And if you don't have that step strategy, right, you don't have enough strength, now I've repositioned myself, my base is support, my center of gravity is smack where it needs to be and I can re readjust myself. So that's where you guys start getting into problems when there's not enough strength to catch yourself. Okay? So all these things are being taught in, in the balance classes and what we're proposing. Okay. Moving on. What's the number one reason that balance is important as we age? Prevent falls. Why do we want to prevent the fall? Broken bones. Broken bones. Everything. Why do we not want broken bones? <laughs> Why else do we want broken bones? You don't heal as quick as you're older. Okay, so what then happens? <laughs> you can get an infection, then what happens? You have to have other care. There you go. Other Boom. care, you end up right down. Mm -hmm. And when you get in pain, you want to sit break bones, what happens you say, you know what, I'm hurting. Let me just sit down and relax. But two weeks of bed rest equals loss of six weeks of strength. And that's a statistic that people do not realize. They say, oh, I'm hurting. Let me just sit down for a little while. They say, no, don't sit. Do something different. Still move, just move differently. And that's what people don't realize. It does not mean you have to stop moving. You just have to move different. Because that strength is going to leave. It's not going to be there. And you think if you're sitting down for, oh, just sit down for a week or two. Okay, when you get up, you're not going to be the same. The strength is not going to be there. And that's what people really fail to realize. Two weeks of bed rest equals a loss of six weeks of strength. Then you got to come hang out with me for about two months. <laughs> but either way, that's something to really think about, okay? You don't want to just sit and stay sedentary because it's not going to be good for you. And that's what happens if people fall and say, oh, let me just sit down for a while. Or then the fear of falling. That's the fear of falling walk. I don't want to do anything, my feet, I don't want them to leave the floor, so then the your feet are staying stuck to the floor. You're not picking them up, so you trip on the carpet. I was just at somewhere with a patient this morning, and he was walking around fine. He's like, I feel fine. I said, I'm afraid to touch you, all that static electricity. He was not picking up his feet. They were just sliding on the floor. So then we talked about it. He said, oh, okay, I guess that is the point. So let me pick up my feet. And that's how he changed his position. He's been falling a lot. And that little conversation that we had with his wife She's like, oh, okay, so I'll make sure I remind him to pick up his feet, kick out his legs completely. How many people stand with their knees bent? You can't. You, how can you stand and be safe if your knees are bent a little bit? That's just getting you closer to the ground. You don't want to be close to the ground. You want to be nice and tall. Yes? I have a question. Uh, yes. About two weeks ago, I read an article in the New York Times. I don't know if people know Jane Brody, mm -hmm. but I practically grew up with reading her columns that are all about health. And she's about my age now. She said she was having trouble with balance, and she knows the best thing to do is to walk on an uneven surface to learn. Mm -hmm. But she, she didn't feel up to hiking <laughs> on true. the Adirondack Mountains now. 
We're going to so get, yeah. She talked about slightly bending your knees when you walk. Mm -hmm. And I, how does that reconcile with what you just said? Depends on the surface. So what I'm talking about is if you know you're always on an even ground, you're walking somewhere, you're not worried about being on the dirt, you know, un unsure where you're stepping, then you know where you're going, make sure those knees are locked. Okay. If you're walking on hiking, going on some gravel, you need your knees to bend so they can counteract whatever you might encounter. Okay. So that's the difference of the decision. But our balance program talks about uneven surfaces. So Kayla's going to bring that up. Yep. Okay. So again, the number one reason is exactly what she said. You need a higher level of care. Okay. And that doesn't look like a whole lot of fun to me. All right. So my goal is to keep you at shaker point as long as possible because it doesn't look that good out there just saying okay um it's just a statistic according to the u.s center for disease control and prevention about one-fourth of americans age 65 plus fall each year well i can tell you yes it's just a statistic i fell this year Okay, I tripped over a dog. Okay, it happens. All right, so I want to know why do many, you want to write those down? Why do many older adults fall? I want to, I want to hear. Why do we fall? Medication. Okay. See, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? <laughs> what else? Vision. Vision. Oh, this is a good, good group. What else? Uh, weak legs. Strength. Weak legs, strength. Yeah. What'd you say, Jane? Stumble. Stumble. Insecurity. Confidence. Yeah. Dizziness. Dizziness. What else? Not paying attention when you're walking. Yeah. Okay. Not paying attention. What else? Not engaging your core. Okay. Ooh. Strength again. <laughs> what else? Posture. Posture. We didn't even talk about that yesterday. Oh, that's just a whole nother conversation. Right. What else? Anything? Weather conditions. Say it again. Weather conditions. Weather conditions. Environment. Weather. Did you? You fell? Oh, yeah. Slipped on the ice and see it. I don't know. I was safe. <laughs> Got up. You guys did really, really good. But I just want to talk about posture for a second before I forget it. So she was saying about, like, why your knees are bent. <clears throat> what happens when we get older also, and this is in my category too, okay, changes start happening in our body. Like Naya said, either we're leaning over a little bit, I can tell you the changes happen in my pelvis where I'm leaning back. So a person that leans back, what's automatically going to happen is their knees bend. Okay? It's just our body's trying to keep us upright. So it does whatever it needs to do to keep us upright. Okay? So that's that can't be a good thing. I see people walking around like this. Half their body's behind them, half is in front of them, or you got the lawnmower people. Right? Because this is so dominant that they're using it. Okay? So posture is a big part, big part of this. Okay. So here we go. Medications. Yay, you got the first one. <laughs> Yay. Some of the medications that we take, some of the side effects can be dizziness. Okay, so if you're having issues like that, check your side effects of your meds, see if any of them are causing that. Or it can cause you to be lethargic, right? So you're not as awake as normal. Here's one no one said, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> not here, not in Shaker Point, we don't drink. The amount, limiting your, your alcohol. I mean, you guys aren't getting in cars, driving, but you still have to walk back. Right? Unless you're drinking at home, that's fine too. Just make sure you put an invite out to Nye and I. <laughs> okay. Physical inactivity. Give it again. That's the whole thing. 
two weeks of bed rest equals six weeks of body strength a lot. That's the biggest thing to take on. If you, this guy sitting down relaxing, he only gets up if the remote falls off his stomach. It's not that he's ready to get a remote. So the idea is to not get to this position. There's nothing wrong with sitting back relaxing and watching TV. That's great. But come up with a routine for yourself. Okay, every day at 10 o'clock, I'm gonna do 30 minutes of walking. This is a big building. If you walk around here for just 30 minutes, I think you did a great job working out for the day. That was good. This is a big building. So whatever your routine would be, I definitely suggest you coming up with a plan for yourself. Make up your own plan. Nobody has to tell you what to do. Just know that it needs to be done.
pain, joint pain, and lack of range of motion. We talked about a little bit with the knee. So if you do not have the full range of motion in your knee to even step, and we talk about a lot in therapy, heel tuck. You want your heel to come down first, then push up with your toe. I know I was in therapy for a whole year because I did not have the range of motion in my knee. So I was walking around like this. At 19, this is how I was walking around college. <laughs> I'm glad it happened because I picked my profession, but the idea that I did not have the range of motion in my knee. So because of that, now I'm walking like this. And I'm, I fell down the steps in school <laughs> a couple times because I didn't have the range. I couldn't do it. And I was not listening that this is something physical happening. Nope, nope, I could do it. I'm 19, this will be fine. Okay, well after having three more surgeries and falling down some steps, I realized, okay, something's wrong. We need to do something different. But having a lack of range of motion is a big deal. And pain, think about, we talked about back. If your back starts to hurt you, now you're gonna be here. Okay, so now your center of gravity is forward. Now you're shifting, now you have a narrow base of support. You're not stepping tall, you're stepping nice and thin, just like this. So this causes you potentially to fall. So that's how lack of range of motion and pain can cause you to have increased risk of fall. Unsecured floor rug. I used to do a lot of home evals. I go to people's homes and just assess their home environment, how they can be safe. I never recommend for anybody to have a floor rug. I know that's something nice. I know I grew up with them in the bathroom, had a matching toilet seat, that's how it was. Everything matched. Towels, oh my God, my mother's into it. But the idea is that when I graduated PT school, I went over to my parents, I said, oh, see this, you gotta get rid of this. So my father said, come here, let me show you something. He showed me the door. He said, you and your degree, go on out. <laughs> I like my dog, I like how it is. He just kicked me out. So, okay, daddy, I understand at 50, you weren't ready for that. But now, they're 70. They gotta understand that this is something to think about. You should never really have any type of fur rug in your home. Now, like I said, I used to do the home about. So I had patients who were, had these area rugs that were part of the family. He said, nope, this is a part of my family rug. You are not taking it. I'm keeping it. I need it. Uh, I don't think you need it. Oh, yes, I do. Then she walks by and tips a toe on it. So, okay, you can keep it. So I go over there with duct tape. Duct tape the rug down. Make sure that it's secure. It's still nice. She's still having her family heirloom there, but she's safe. And that was the biggest thing is that she wants to keep it, but remain safe. So having fur rugs or airy rugs are not, is not recommended, especially because they move. I know, if, I know if you're familiar with those strips that you can put on the floor, those are great for lack of friction. Take friction away, put those in the bathroom. Forget about the floor rug, just get the strips down. No, it's not that cute, but it still keeps you safe. You know, so that's the biggest thing. Air rugs are a big problem. Lighting. So, also, when I did these home visits, I recommended people to put night lights in the hallway. I know my hallway of my house, my daughter, bless her, she, she's seven. So she got up one night and I took the hall light out. She said, I don't need that light, I don't need it, okay. She got up in the middle of the night, went to try to go to the bathroom, she was in the closet. She wasn't even near the bathroom. She, but because she didn't have lighting, nothing in the bazaar, she was just trying to sit down in the bathroom to go to the bathroom, oh my God, it was just something to hear. But that's how lighting is a problem. So that was just a seven-year-old. Just think about somebody who's 77, trying to walk up, getting to go to the bathroom, and they don't have any lighting, they're just trying to feel their way, make sure they're safe. Potentially, they could fall. I had somebody who fell in the middle of the night going to the bathroom, she lived alone. Nobody knew. It wasn't until three o'clock the next day when her daughter came to check and give her food, she found her mom on the floor, outside of the bathroom. She had been laying there for 12 hours, and there's nothing she could have done. But because she didn't have any lighting, that put her at a higher risk of fall. So lighting is key. Plus you're rushing, too. Rushing, yes. Going to the bathroom. <laughs> this is another thing, another story about doing home about. This patient wants to stay home and wants to stay safe in her own apartment. I get it, no problem. My recommendation was to put a commode in her bathroom, in her bedroom, instead of her having to get up and go to the bathroom. I'm not sleeping in a commode. You gotta be kidding me. That's not, I'm not putting that in my toilet in my bedroom. I want to smell, okay, okay, well, let's try it. So next day I went back to check in, she fell. She said, okay, I'll take the commode. I have people that can come and clean it out of that app on, I'll take the commode. But it kept her safe and in her own apartment. So that's the key, don't rush. People get up and have to go to the bathroom, how many, you walk up like this, and now your basic support is gone. 
Your legs are tight together because they're going to squeeze. They don't have any type of accident. So now you're walking like this, okay? And now you're struggling. Now you have no lighting. Now you're trying to rush. You could fall. So all of that plays a role of decreasing your independence and putting at risk. All right. So in training, when I train somebody for balance, okay, I train all three systems. I train your visual, your vestibular, which is your ears, let me see if I can get this right, and the somatosensory, I cannot pronounce that word, somatosensory system. The somatosensory system is the, the receptors that are in your whole entire body, your fingers, so you don't, when you touch something hot, you take your hands away, your feet. The feet are the ones that I'm most cautious of, okay? So the feet has receptors underneath it, so it tells me I'm on wooden floor, okay? There's a step, now I'm on carpet. I'm on grass, now I'm on sand. Now I'm on grass, now I'm on concrete. And my feet constantly send these signals up so I know what's going on, okay? Or not, you know it on a subconscious kind of level, all right? If your ears are not working right, well, you bet we better train the visual and the somatosensory system to, to make up for lack of, what I say, ears? Ears. Okay. If your vision is being a problem, well, we better heighten up the vestibular and the somatosensory responses. Okay? If your somatosensory under your feet are not working, you have... Uh, retina, uh, not retinopathy, neuropathy. neuropathy in your feet, well, I better heighten up the other two systems, okay? So you have less of a chance of falling. Do you want to say anything? No, you're right. Okay. Um, there's a picture down there below, static and dynamic balance. A lot of times I'm working with patients and yeah, we're standing and we're just reaching out in place. So this is dynamic balance. If you're just standing still, this is static. So anything where you're standing and using your arms or your legs to do other things while you're up, that's dynamic activity. So that's the difference between dynamic and static balance. A lot of times, so, oh, I have a, I'm struggling with my balance. I'm fine when I stand up in the kitchen and then to stand to the counter. You're right, that's static. But when you go to move and turn and open up the refrigerator, that's dynamic. And that's how that plays a role in losing your balance. All right, so we talked about the visual system. We talked about the vestibular system, and then we talked about the somatosensory system. So, Barb said it in the beginning, that uneven surfaces, okay? So, I work with you on uneven surfaces, because you're not just on one surface. Either you're walking over the cat in the apartment, or the dog in the apartment, or you're there's, you know, you're going from your carpet to your wooden floors, all right? So I have put together and putting together, actually, a mat to help you guys with this. And you know where I got this idea from? I'm going to give it up to Bob, okay? Because the idea came about when Bob sent me an article from the UK that these people in the UK were doing really cool balance stuff. And I can't remember exactly, but I don't know if they have people harnessed in, but some people, they, they'll harness you in, they have you walk, and all of a sudden something will pop up and you have to step over it, right? So they do a lot of that training in the UK. So let's get it going in the US now. So this is a 24 by 24 square. You can see it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It all interlocks. There's going to be 12 of these, making it really long, 12 feet long, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That no, might be a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, if it's 24 by 24, it is gonna be longer than 12 feet. So on each mat, there's a different surface. Oh, wow. Should I carpet it, right? Okay. Grass. <laughs> <laughs> a bath mat. <laughs> this is a, a balance pad, so this is um, squishy. It's 
So it's a different type of surface. <gasps> oh, wow. wow. Okay. Yep. Memory foam. Oh. <laughs> Who doesn't have one of those? I love those. Um, these are different types in here. You can feel them. Okay. They're all different. All different. And what I forget? I forget what I forgot. Oh, this one. This one. Okay. And the last two are, I got to catch my breath. <laughs> the last two are um, sand. So the sand will be in like a burlap bag. So you, you're uneven when you walk. And the last one is um, a rubberized, what they use on playgrounds. It's a rubber mulch. So it's going to make that surface uneven. So you're going to be walking across these without your shoes on. Because I want you to feel them. I want your feet to start waking up and understand what's going on from the ground up. Okay? So the other thing, unless I catch my breath. <laughs> the other thing that we're going to be using are cue pads. Cue pads are my favorite thing. So if you guys remember, uh, last February actually, I did a seminar on cognitive, right? Because I'm big on trying to put two things together. Let's start getting the connections that we've lost in our brain. We can relearn. Their research is showing that connections can be remade. That is why that drumming program is in this building, okay? Because the research is big on, on uh, doing a physical activity and a um, a cognitive activity at the same time helps rebuild, not rebuild, but make, make new connections. So if the connection's not working like that, all right, it's got to bypass it, and hopefully we can get it there. So these pads do a lot of different things. One reason I like them, see how they light up? Okay. That's just, that's just fun within itself. So the light up one, what that's about is my side to side balance, okay? How much of my balance is on my left foot and how much is on my right foot? I'm pretty even right now, I'm standing right. Someone better take a picture of this because this doesn't happen. So my balance is even between my left foot and my right foot. I'm standing on both feet. Not everybody does that. Some people are like this, okay? Then you're at the doctor's office and you're like, why? Does my knee hurt so badly? They take an x-ray and it shows that you have, uh, you've lost cartilage, you, you've got, you need a knee replacement. Well, why is one knee, why isn't this knee doing it then, right? Well, it's an age-related thing the doctor will say. That's BS. And you know why that's BS? Because the other knee would do it. It's the same damn age, right? But the fact is, look at this, I'm standing on this leg because this one bothers me, right? So I do this often enough, now my knee's shot, now my hip's shot, because your body's not made to hold all the weight on one side for an amount of time. So you gotta be on both feet. The other thing that it does, there we go, <coughs> there we go. It tells me, see the blue dots on it? If the blue dots are at the right, I can make it happen on this foot here. On the, on the right, it's telling me I'm on my toes. If I go on my heels, it's telling me I'm standing on my heels and the lights go to the left. I want those white lights to light up. So I'm on my toes and my heels. It's a great visual to show it. The other thing that these do, and this is part of this cognitive thing, and if you've taken any of my balance classes, we've used this. I take a step. What just lit up? What color? Pink, I guess. Okay, it's purple. It's purple. Okay. But what color was the pad? Green. 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 It's telling me when I step on it that I need 
to go to the purple pad. So I step on the purple pad. What just lit up? Uh, orange. So what would I do? Go to orange. Go to orange. What just lit up? There you go. Orange. Oh, jeez. <laughs> orange. It's fun. Here we go. Purple. Purple. Go to purple. Oh, green. So what am I practicing now? I'm practicing our step strategy. Remember we talked about that in the beginning. You have your ankle strategy. You have your hip strategy. The third mo most important one is that step strategy. I have you stepping. I have you stepping. Right? The last part that it does. There we go. There we go. There we go. Reaction training. I step on it. It goes out. over. How about that one? Okay? So I love using these. These are a great tool. So let me just move them so I don't trip because I'm also learning as I get older not to leave stuff on the floor. So being this, okay, Shaker Point is offering you a program for balance and this balance is can also be not just for beginners. So let's say a beginner wanted to do it, but an advanced person wants to do it. Nice, can you stand on that? So here we are working on your sways, right? We're swaying. I'm a beginner, I stay on the floor. Naya's not a beginner, she's advanced. I put you on a, a balance mat, right? So it can be for any level. So Shaker Point is offering you a program, a balance program that's three times a week for 45 minutes each time with a physical therapist and a certified personal trainer that have, has devised this program. Now I've also backed up this program by, by researching, okay? There was research study done saying that Balance, where balance is, is key, okay, is when you're doing dual activities. So, can I borrow your thing for a second? Thank you. So, I'm walking and I'm reading. The importance of balance as we age. That's a dual activity, right? Important. I know I was going somewhere with that. Three times a week, 45 minutes for 12 weeks, okay? That's a lot of balance. Now, somebody asked me earlier, what happens after the 12 weeks? Okay, that's a really good point. And my answer would be, you're on maintenance now. You've learned every, not every tool, but as many tools as we can throw at you. You have the workouts, you still need to practice it. You can't sit down because what have you learned about inactivity? Two weeks, six weeks. So I'm going to skip this one page because we just talked about this. So unfortunately, I have to put a price to it because there's a price to have Naya on this staff to do this. Okay. So what I've devised is for 12 weeks, three, at three times a week, 45 minutes each time. If you sign up by January 26, it is only $216, which is a savings of $74 because after that, I'm going to boost the price up to $290. So if we stick to the $216, I believe that is almost $6 a class. You can't get that at a gym. All right? So I can only take groups 6 to 10 people. Two reasons. 10 people is my maximum in classes right now because of COVID restrictions, right? I know the square footage of the room in the group exercise studio and how many people I can fit in with a six foot span. So I know everybody's safe, okay? The other reason is we got four eyes on you. I can only handle so many people before it becomes unsafe. The other question that was asked is days and times. I don't know yet until I see the amount of interest. 
So I know the amount of interest I got from the first group, the second group, and this is the third group. So if you're interested in this, you need to let myself know whenever you want, or Naya know, so we can make sure we get appropriate days and times set up for this. Does anybody have any questions? Wow. What happens if you get more than enough people? We haven't thought about that yet. Okay. <laughs> I hate to, like, here's my thing, and this is what I told Naya, too. I don't want to have to think about it if I don't have to think about it. Right? right? So when the problem arises, then I'll think about it. <laughs> but I don't want to put more in my brain than I need to. So if that happens, I will come up with a solution, because I always do. Great question. Any other questions? Let me understand. You're talking about three, three times a week for yes. 45 minutes. Yes. For 12 weeks. Yes. And possibly you could be in a group of 10 people. Yes. I could only, I would have to do one on one. Why? That's my hot bad idea. No. 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 Nope. You got to trust my method of madness and that both of us know what we're doing and we're not gonna let you get hurt because what does that say about the program? A, that it's not working. B, now I've got somebody hurt and C, you're gonna talk bad about me. <laughs> you can't do that anyway. Okay, you are, you are safe whether I keep you seated while somebody else is doing something. So, for example, Wednesday when I was teaching, because we do have that regular balance class. And will you continue to have that? Yes. Okay. I'm still going to have that. So you could potentially be doing balance four times a week. Yeah. I've got the one that's free on Wednesdays. Okay? What we did on Wednesdays was I put a ladder up, right? And I made them reach all the way up for things or really low for things. And when Pat wasn't doing it, other people sat down. Not for a long amount of time. I move them quickly. So normally, like, we do drills that I can do two people at once. Naya's on one, I'm on another. Actually, Eileen, excuse me, Eileen helps me on Wednesdays. Okay? So I've got everybody covered. There's no way I'm going to let somebody fall for a reason me not being there. Okay? I try to keep you as safe as possible because I want you staying at Shaker Point. I like you. We like you. Oh, thanks. That was a really good question, though, Jane. Any other questions? And think about the sensory we met. You know, sometimes we'll go outside. I know I've taken some patients outside, walked on the grass, the different parts, you know, the concrete. Um, and we do do that. It's something different. But to be able to have a sensory mat and change in many different steps and walk on the grass and go to stands all in the same time, you don't, you don't really get that chance. Um, and then to have people that can be there and support you and make sure you're okay. I think that's the bigger picture because we don't want you practicing on your own. Right. I don't go home and just see if you can stand up on one leg. No, don't do that. <laughs> just do it with us. And then if, once you get comfortable, and then you can say, okay, you know what? I can think I can stand at home just like this at the counter. Then you practice it enough with us having people around you to feel like, okay, maybe I can try a little bit on my own. Because that's what you do after the 12 weeks. You come up with your own home exercise program and you do it. And to maintain your current level of function. Right, that's the idea. That's correct. Good point. Good point. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. All right, yay. Let me just turn this off. <laughs>